So why is mental illness so high among people who experience homelessness? It's a, it's a good question. Um, I think to really understand this, we, we need to go back several decades. Um, we, we need to start with deinstitutionalization in Canada. Um, and so we're really talking about the 1970s and the 1980s when psychiatric hospitals were closed down for reasons that were very well intended. Um, there were better treatments, there was more information about mental illness and that people could live meaningful lives in the community. Um, and there was more awareness of the very poor conditions in psychiatric hospitals uh, at the time. And what happened was these closing of psychiatric hospitals and, and beds led to large amounts of people leaving these institutions with nowhere to go, nowhere that they could be supported. And the effects of that continue to be seen in the homeless population today. And so unfortunately, this led to decades of overrepresentation of people with serious mental illness in the homeless population simply because there weren't options in the community that could provide the supports that they needed to, um, to be housed. If we fast forward now and we look at um, mental illness and homelessness, uh, we can really recognize that there are different ways that these interact. For some people, mental illness can be a pathway into homelessness where you, um, a mental health crisis, for example, leads to subsequent problems, whether that be you know, job loss, relationship problems, prolonged hospitalization, all of which culminate in loss of housing uh, and one's entrance into homelessness. Um, but it can also be a consequence of homelessness. Recognizing that many people experiencing homelessness talk about their experience of homelessness as a trauma. And anytime we're talking about the experience of a trauma, we're talking about risk of developing mental health problems. And when we think of homelessness for many people, unfortunately, that's not solved overnight. And so you have this ongoing continued experience of a traumatic situation where people are striving to simply get through it. Um, this has real potential to cause people um, either initial mental health problems or exacerbate and worsen their existing mental health problems. And then on top of that, of course, there's a lot of, there's a lot of victimization. Um, people experiencing homelessness um, are often believed that they are going to be a threat to others, but the research is very clear that they are much more likely to be victimized themselves, whether that's sexual abuse and, and violence or physical abuse and violence. And so these experiences can further cause uh, mental health problems as well. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think there's also a dimension to it that uh, there's an aspect of, of sort of diagnosed mental illness. And then there's also a sense of being unwell, generally, you know, having perhaps a poor quality of life that is, you know, difficult when you're experiencing homelessness that may not rise to the level of being, you know, a diagnosed depression, but it may be, you know, sort of general sense that it's difficult to not have housing and to have to spend your days looking to try to meet your basic needs. So it, it is complicated and you're absolutely right that, you know, what comes first? It, it may not be that either does. There's a cycle of, you know, being mentally unwell and losing housing, losing housing also makes you mentally unwell. So yeah, it, it is absolutely a tricky question and, and no clear answers. <laughs> um, just to add one more piece on that, I think you bring up something that's really important. Even if we look at, you know, the basic building blocks to all of us as human beings that affect our mental health. And one of those things is sleep. Um, and recognizing that people staying in shelter are not getting a good night's rest. And this is going on for for many nights often. And so even if we think of the impacts of poor sleep on somebody, 
it's understandable that that's going to put them in a position where they're more prone to difficult emotions and having some of those experiences that from all other vantage points look like mental illness when in fact it's simply that people aren't well rested they're not uh they're not nourished in terms of the food they're that they're eating and they're experiencing something that really many of us as human beings would be experiencing in the exact same position yeah very interesting we did some research a few years ago looking at quality of life for men and women experiencing homelessness and comparing them and uh, and there were many differences based on gender, but what they had in common was that lack of sleep. And if you address the sleep, then quality of life got better for both. Mm -hmm. So very important. Um, 